Hello, my name is Mark Etherton. I'm a hydronic heating system designer, educator, contractor, technical magazine writer, and most recently the recipient of the Carlson Hollihan Industry Award of Excellence, as bestowed upon me by my peers. It is a great honor and privilege to be recognized by this award, and I will carry it proudly for the next two years. I'm coming to you today to talk about the intricacies of properly determining the right size of a replacement boiler for an existing building. A person could perform a detailed heat loss calculation, but it has been my experience that even on jobs that I know for a fact are properly sized, when it gets real cold outside, like down to design condition, the heating system is only running at 50% of its capacity. This is an indication that the heat source is twice as large as it needs to be. This results in wasted fuel and excess wear and tear on the heating source components from frequent starting and stopping. Alternatively, if a person were to be in the mechanical room for a couple of hours during these extremely cold design conditions, they would be able to perform a runtime audit on the heating system and determine the exact size of the boiler necessary to hit the 100% heat source runtime factor at design condition, which is the most efficient use of the heating system. The only problem is that design conditions in this part of the country only occur for around 2% of the heating season. Allow me to introduce you to the solution, Onset Computer's Hobo FlexMart Data Logger. Let's start with the FlexStart module. In order to properly monitor a heating system for thermal performance, it is necessary to watch numerous points of the heating plant, building, and outdoor exposure environments to determine actual heating load versus domestic hot water production loads if the boiler also performs that function. It is not necessary, however, to be at design conditions in order to gather the data necessary to extrapolate those conditions to a true design condition outside. It only needs to be moderately cold outside and at night to get a good and accurate picture of the equipment necessary to properly heat a given building. Let's look at the critical sensor placements. System supply. This is the first point we need to monitor. It will show us the actual supply temperature being supplied to the building by the heating system. System return. The second sensor is placed on the system return pipe. The differential in temperature between these two points is a major indication of the real-time demand being imparted upon the heating system, but we're not done yet by any means. Outside air temperature. We also need to watch the outside air temperature. This will give us an idea of how cold it got outside during our monitoring program. This is the primary driving force behind heating system demand, but in most cases it is not the only load being imparted upon the heating plant. Domestic hot water supply. We also need to monitor the domestic hot water heating system demand. This point will indicate any shortages of domestic hot water occurring during peak demands. Circulation return. We also need to monitor the circulation return to see what kind of differential the domestic hot water system is seeing during non-demand periods or standby losses. Domestic hot water demand. We can also place a sensor in such a position that we can watch real-time demands for domestic hot water to see if they fall within a normal load profile. I should point out here that if the circulation return pump is normally controlled by an aquastat that is necessary to turn the return aquastat up to keep the circulation return pump running constantly during this test. Once the test is done, remember to return the aquastat back to its normal setting. In addition to temperature sensors, it is also necessary to monitor the operation of the gas valve, oil valve, or electrical contactor relay. We can perform this function with this wonderful little device known as a Hobo State Recorder. It monitors a relay wired in parallel to the heat source valve, solenoid, or coil. And when the heat source is on, the recorder ev records the event with an on time stamp. When the heat source turns off, the recorder again records a real time stamp showing exactly when the burner or heat source shuts down, giving you an off time stamp.
All of this information would require numerous people to record the data, and then it would take a long time to extrapolate all the data retrieved in order to determine the proper size of the heating appliance necessary for replacement. With the software provided by Onset Computer Corporation, a person can view the trends shortly after the data has been downloaded from the data loggers to their laptop computer to see if there are any major discrepancies like power outages, ignition attempt failures, major domestic hot water leaks within the building, and so on. It is also possible to export the downloaded data to a Microsoft Excel file for further minute review and further manipulation and extrapolation. It is possible, in fact recommended, that the data that is used for extrapolation be that data which is retrieved from the wee hours of the morning, like between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m., when no one is showering and the effects of the previous day's sunshine have long been dissipated. At this point, you are seeing the building and the heating system in a fairly steady state of operation. It will also be necessary to know how many BTUs per minute that the heat plant is capable of producing. In the case of a natural gas fired boiler, this will require a stopwatch, a calculator, and knowledge of the local caloric content per cubic foot of the natural gas. Now, take 3600, which are the number of seconds in an hour, and divide it by the elapsed time of the fastest moving needle. Take the results of that calculation and multiply it times the unit of measure for one revolution of the fastest moving meter hand. Now take that answer and multiply it times the caloric content of the natural gas in your area. Remember, natural gas at higher elevations may not contain 1050 BTUs per cubic foot. Lastly, take that number and divide it by 60 to determine the number of BTUs per minute of operation of the heat source. It will also be necessary to test the appliance for instantaneous thermal efficiency. Make sure that you adjust the appliance output based on tested efficiency. This will get you down to the final true and correct number for the heat source contribution to the load. Now that you have determined the net output of the boiler for a given period of heating demand, you can now extrapolate this information to local design conditions and be relatively assured of having an appliance who will run considerably more efficient due to proper sizing. Now, as you can see, we've reduced the size of the boiler significantly by a factor of 58%. This will result in a greater runtime fraction at design condition, less wear and tear from short cycling, and a substantial energy savings during operation.